Uh, thank you, and thanks to all of the organizers um, for the opportunity to speak and to be here. It's been a great conference so far, and I'm, I'm looking forward to the rest of the talks, too. So I'm going to talk to you today about groups that act on the circle. Uh, not pseudo groups, actually groups this time. And uh, if you have a group acting on the circle with some regularity, For example, I don't know, with lots of regularity, maybe it's real analytic. Uh, then you go talk to Bertrand, and he says there's some hope at a complete classification in this, in this case. Um, I guess at least if the uh, action is discrete. Um, and if you go down a big jump and look at, I don't know, C2 or even C1 plus uh, something else, um, then there's lots of tools. We saw, what, in uh, Bertrand's first lecture, a theorem of Dumini um, that, that tells you uh, something about the trigraph, or in this case, the Cayley graph and the action, uh, assuming C2. And there's lots else that you can get out of this. Um, and maybe for that, you should go talk to Andres Navas or read his book that has lots uh, of information on groups of circle diffeomorphisms. Uh, but if instead you only have homeomorphisms of the circle, then uh, none of this Dumini or Capel's lemma or Sextetter's theorem applies. And you need to do something completely different. And, uh, uh, and yet, sometimes, you know, I feel like very often in life, this is what you're given. For example, I don't know, maybe you have some nice group acting on the plane and you find an invariant open set and you're very pleased because uh, now you can look at the prime ends and you've reduced it to a two-dimensional dynamics problem to a one-dimensional dynamics problem. Well, prime ends is essentially a topological object, right? This is going to be an action by homeomorphisms. So I'd like to understand this in many cases, uh, but... Uh, you know, somehow my perspective, or what I think is the best philosophy, is to try and reduce the problem of a group acting on the circle to something combinatorial or easier to deal with, and hope, just hope you don't lose too much information. Um, so what I want to do today is one perspective on that. Uh, so let's suppose as a, as a Nice toy example. I have a group acting on the circle. Um, and suppose there's some point x uh, that has a free orbit. Or in other words, a uh, trivial stabilizer. Well, this gives me something to start with. Then I can identify my group uh, with uh, points in the orbit. And I can define a, a kind of orientation function on triples of groups uh, of, of group elements. Uh, let me do this on this board so I have lots of space. Um, Okay, so I use this identification to take a triple of group elements, g1, g2, g3, to uh, plus or minus one, depending on the orientation of the triangle, or the, the triple, g1 of x, g2 of x, g3 of x. So as I've drawn it, this, gets posit this is positively oriented. They go in counterclockwise order. Mm -hmm. And if I was silly and I picked two of these to be the same, uh, I'll give it the value zero. So you can check that this is not just a function. In fact, it's a co-cycle. Uh, you can see this on the circle if you have four points um, and you know on three of the possible triples what value this takes. It determines the fourth. Fun little combinatorial exercise. And so this tells you, and, and that it determines the fourth is exactly 
uh, co-boundary condition in the sense of, of second group cohomology. Uh, but that's not important for today if you don't like those words. Um, and it has another nice property, uh, which is that it's uh, left multiplication invariant. Okay, my group acts by homeomorphisms, it preserves the preserve orientation. It's a standing assumption for today. Um, good, so I've changed the group action with this uh, assumption of a free or orbit into some discrete valued thing. And I guess I can uh, add as a nice remark is that the free, if, 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 if instead, uh, X has non-trivial stabilizer. Well, I try and do the same procedure and I'll get a, a partially defined uh, function. It'll be defined on cosets of the stabilizer. Okay, and in this case, um, when we get uh, C defined on cosets, And there are, in general, many ways to extend. Um, Satis, there's many ways to extend this to such a function on G um, that zero only if uh, Two of the two of the points are, are zero are, are the same only if it's a degenerate cycle. But the free orbit picture is kind of the nice one. Okay. Now, why this is useful is because you can go back the other way. Right. So conversely, uh, given. a function, uh, plus or minus one and zero, that satisfies all of these properties. Uh, let me mark what they are. Uh, so it should be left multiplication invariant. Uh, it takes a value zero only on degenerate triples, and it's a co-cycle, so it satisfies the co-cycle condition on ordered triples. Um, if it satisfies all of these, then there exists an action unique up to conjugacy uh, in fact, I can say unique up to conjugacy fixing x, a point, um, uh, of g on S1, where x has a free orbit. Okay, so these really capture uh, uh, all faithful actions of a sense uh, of a group on the circle. Um, so if you haven't seen the picture of this, I'll sketch it quickly of how you go the other way. Uh, I need, oh, sorry, I didn't say, uh, I need an assumption that my group here, G, is countable. Okay. You can make counterexamples, you can make really dumb counterexamples by taking a group that's larger than the cardinality of the group of homeomorphisms of the circle or something like that, but there's non-trivial counterexamples of, uh, also. Okay, so how do you do this? Uh, you, this is fun, you enumerate the elements of G. I'm going to start with uh, G0 to be the identity, G1, keep going. Uh, here's my point X. I'm going to identify this with G0. I'm going to reconstruct what I had over there. Uh, I put G1 wherever I want. 
Okay, now I look at my first triple and I know whether it's positively or negatively oriented. I'll choose the midpoint of whatever segment makes sense to label with G2. Uh, maybe it was, maybe G0, G1, G2 is negatively oriented, so it should go here. Okay. And now I look at my four tuple, uh, my next element, and I know based on this information exactly which segment it should sit in, and I label the midpoint. Okay. This co-cycle condition tells you exactly that you'll never have an incompatible set of, of, of information about which, which segment to sit, to sit it in. Okay. And so you continue uh, along this process until you have embedded uh, G or the orbit, what I'm going to make forced to be the orbit of X under my action. And then you show that the natural left action of G on this orbit or on this countable set extends to an action by homeomorphisms of the circle. Uh, so. So there's something to check there to make sure that that works, but it does. Yeah? You need up to semi-conjugacy, or you're asking the only to be dense, or? No, nope, uh, none of the above. OK, so proposition. The procedure I described for you, where you choose the midpoint at each time, gives you an action unique up to conjugacy. If you choose a different enumeration of your group, OK, uh, then you'll get some, or, or, yeah, if you choose a different enumeration of your group, or if you do something silly, like I put G1X, I don't know, there instead of there to start, I'll get something that is literally conjugate to this action by homeomorphism. Okay, so this is a good point that Victor makes. I can uh, define an action with the same uh, cyclic order of an orbit by taking this guy and doing a Donjois trick blowing up another orbit, replacing it with an interval. And I'll get something semi-conjugate, um, and where the cyclical uh, structure of this orbit, so if I go back to step one and try and recover the co-cycle, I'll get the same answer. Okay, But it, it's not the one given by this construction. This one is like the minimal such with a given orbit, or, or, orbit structure. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> It's, it's really hard to, to not move the board with your hand. I sympathize now with everyone else giving talks. There you go. All right. OK, uh, so let me give names to these things, because we're going to talk about them. So here's our terminology. Such a co-cycle C satisfying the red underlined things is called a uh, circular order on the group G, or if you want to be really precise, you'll call it a left invariant circular order on G. Um, this induced action on the circle uh, is called the dynamical realization, following uh, terminology of Navas, dynamical realization. And I'll write it when I need to write it as a map from G to the group of homeomorphisms of the circle that preserve orientation. I'll write it as a, a row sub C. Okay. okay. So these are interesting to study on their own, right? The set of all possible circular orders. Remember, this is an algebraic thing. It's a discrete two co-cycle. Um, and yet, the existence of such implies that your group acts on the circle. Uh, so it's closely related to left orders or left invariant linear orders, where you replace this kind of thing by just a left invariant greater than total order on your group. But uh, also, I mean, for me, optimistically, we can use this to try and study actions of groups on the circle. So to this end, uh, let's also define CO of G 
to be the space of all circular orders. Okay, where the topology is just as a, as a subset of this, as a, as a function space, or I mean concretely, two orders are close if they agree on a very large set, finite set of elements. Okay. Uh, if you want to know what this looks like, well, because it's this function space, it's always going to be, it, it's compact, uh, it's totally disconnected, and is, if G is countable, um, then it's metrizable. These are all not hard. Uh, in some cases, you can say exactly what it looks like. So for instance, here's some things we know. Uh, this is easy. You take a group with three elements. Uh, this is a set with two points. You got this triangle and you got that triangle. Uh, if uh, you take the integers, um, this is the Cantor set. That's a fun exercise to do if you haven't done it. Um, if you take the fundamental group of a closed surface, uh, I'm going to go out there and conjecture that this is a Cantor set. That's a nice, compact, totally disconnected space. But this is only known in the case where your surface is a torus. Not known for higher genus. Uh, and if I don't know what's another nice group, take the free group on two generators. Uh, I don't know. But open question, what is this space? <laughs> yeah. Sure, in fact, this co-cycle is a co-cycle representative for the Euler class. So you can, yeah. Um, but sort of, you know, Uh, well, actually, so here's something. If, yeah, if there's no isolated points, then it's a Cantor set by general topology. If there are isolated points, remove them. Maybe now there's new isolated points because they accumulated on some. So, so I don't know a single example where that happens. It's possible that never happens. I, in the left order case, I also don't know a single example. So open question that you know I'm trying to think about is, uh, yeah, what's the derived set of this? Are there any conditions on your group that guarantee that it's, you know, maybe, Potentially, it's always it's it, 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 yeah it's always just a Cantor set. Okay, um, but so so here is my naive hope. To each circular order, uh, I have uh, action of the group on the circle. So there's maybe some relationship, or at least I have a map going from circular orders to the space of all homomorphisms from G to, let me draw a line and then I don't use it, uh, the group of homeomorphisms of the circle. Okay. Um, and I guess the image here is maybe faithful actions only. Okay. And I also have something going back this way, although if my if I if I, if I have a point that if I don't have a point with trivial stabilizer, then I have lots of choices. Okay. Um, and so what my naive hope is that uh, this as a space has something to do with this as a space with the compact open topology. So two actions are nearby if, I don't know, on a set of generators, if you're finitely generated, they go to nearby homeomorphisms. Okay. Okay, so let's, let's put this hope in some more concrete terms. Um, for instance, uh, maybe you would say, okay, so they, 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 you can't say these are homeomorphic because this is uh, totally disconnected and typically this has very large connected components. But maybe there's something like uh, no isolated points looks like connectedness. 
Okay. Or um, maybe an isolated point, an isolated circular order corresponds to an action that's rigid. And what I'll tell you for the rest of this lecture today is some good progress on this. So theorem, um, and this is joint with Cristobal Rivas. Um, in fact, everything from now on is in case I don't say it again, uh, is, let me summarize it as follows. Um, this is completely false, and a counterexample is uh, the group, uh, free group on two generators. Well, sure, it has infinitely many non-conjugate, different-looking isolated points, um, and yet, this space is connected, and you can even argue that the subset of faithful actions is still connected. So, okay, that was, that was too optimistic. Um, we do get this in a, very, in a very precise sense, which I'll state in a, in a moment. Um, isolated circular orders are actions with a strong rigidity property that you can write down exactly. Uh, and therefore, there is, you know, and, 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 and there's some, some hope still at a correspondence here, and we can say a few things. And I think hopefully in the future we'll say a bit more. So that's the goal. So let's see, more precisely. Okay. Um, this first part, this what is this, what could there possibly be a correspondence? There is some kind of continuity of uh, Okay. Um, now, this is not actually a map, right? This gives me conjugacy classes of actions on the circle, and I had to sort of fix my point x to call the identity. Um, but you can say sort of as best as you can, if I start with a circular order, and I send it over to a dynamical realization, um, then uh, for any neighborhood, neighborhood of this action, uh, there exists a neighborhood here of this order so that each uh, order there has a dynamical realization in V. Mm -hmm. There exists a neighborhood U of C such that any other circular order in U um, as dynamical realization in V. And so this is not that hard. And the reason you should believe it, what is this really saying? Let me do a problem of translation here. It's saying I've got an action of a group on the circle. So let's like look at the orbit of my point X here. I don't know, maybe it's some, um, you know, not necessarily dense. Uh, Okay, um, what is this saying? If I have another action, so this will be my row C prime, that agrees with, uh, so that the orbit of X under row C prime agrees on a big enough finite subset of this, then I can actually make them be close by actions. Okay. So the idea is just to choose your neighborhood here small enough so you, you control what's happening in gaps or you, you know, if you imagine as an easy case this orbit is dense, then you can control it on a fine enough mesh as you want. 
Okay. So there's things to check here, but it's uh, but it's not it's not sophisticated. Um, more, more, more interesting uh, is this rigidity theorem. So let me tell you how to go from a combinatorial thing to an action of a circle of a group on the circle that has as strong a rigidity property as you could possibly hope for. So here is the statement of the theorem: uh, a circular order is isolated. If and only if its dynamical realization uh, has the following strong rigidity property. Okay, so what do I mean by this property? Uh, for every nearby action is semi conjugate by something continuous that fixes the special point x. Oh, so, uh, there is a neighborhood, U of rho C, in the space of actions of my group on the circle, such that uh, for anything in that neighborhood, there exists a continuous uh, semi-conjugacy. So a degree one map of the circle uh, that fixes x, my, my reference point, the point that's looking like the identity and my identification of g in its orbit, um, and such that uh, if I compose, sorry, uh, rho with h, this is the same as rho c composed with h. H on the other side. So this is asymmetric. Um, and the asymmetry is coming from the remark before about the question that Victor asked, where, well, I start with a dynamical realization and I could always make a new action by blowing up little intervals, doing a Donjois <laughs> trick, get something semi conjugate but not conjugate. Okay, that you're allowed to do. Theorem uh, you're an isolated point if and only if that's the only thing you're allowed to do to get a nearby action of your group on the circle. H is monotone, H is monotone yeah. So I said semi-conjugacy. Maybe I should be precise and say continuous monotone degree one H. Uh, Let me give you just a hint at uh, the proof so you get an idea of what this is actually saying. Mm -hmm. What is this actually saying? Well, so in one direction, uh, no, let's see the other direction first. This way, I have rigidity. I should get an isolated order. This is essentially this observation about continuity. So this gives me some, this is why I'm saying we can say something about the relationship of, of topology of a space of actions and topology of space of orders. Uh, how does this follow? Let's see, suppose I have something with this super strong rigidity property, anything near is semi-conjugate. Okay, uh, well, for, there's a neighborhood of circular orders that lands in my, uh, Oh, here I've swapped the roles in U, of B, U and V from over on the other board. But there's a neighborhood of circular orders that all have dynamical realizations there, namely that are all semi-conjugate. Okay, and that means that the whole orbit structure is the same. And so the whole circular order was the same. Uh, for this way, Let's see what we have to do. Okay, so this way I'm uh, given C that's isolated and it's dynamical realization rho 
And somehow I have to produce uh, this H. Oh, and I'm uh, given uh, nearby row. OK. Well, so I can give you the outline, but, but, but maybe for the sake of motivation and giving examples and doing some hands-on work in a minute, I won't give you the details. Uh, the steps are, first, I'm going to show that the orbit of x under this action of your group is also free. This is going to use the fact that you came from an isolated circular order. If this wasn't free, you could do some, some tiny little change and change your order a bit outside a big set. So that's something to show. But once you have this, um, uh, I'll use an idea of Andres for left orders, where he uh, did something that's the same as this step here. We're just going to define uh, H on the mm, 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 on this orbit. By uh, well, do the obvious thing. Send it to uh, the corresponding point under your other action. Okay. Good. This, this makes sense. Uh, I need this to be a free orbit in order for this to make sense. OK. And then you show by hand using the construction of what this dynamical realization looks like um, that H extends to a continuous degree one monotone. map that, that, that does exactly what you want it to. You built it to do that on the, on the image of an orbit. You need to show that it extends and extends continuously to do this everywhere. OK. Um, maybe I'll finish this sort of what, what, can we, what can we say in this program by saying we can say some more things about uh, what dynamical realizations look like. Uh, for instance, if you have an isolated circular order, you can show that its dynamical realization is never minimal. In fact, you can say what it looks like on the complement of a, of a minimal set um, and describe some things pretty concretely. But I think what I want to do for the remaining uh, 15 or so minutes is to give you some examples um, and to show how you can actually get your hands on some, some actions on the circle. Unless there are questions at this point. Okay, let's play with some examples. And I want to take examples where, uh, to start off with, where G is a free group on two generators. Uh, let me build one circular order on G. And remember, to do this, I need to give you uh, action of the group on the circle and a point with a free orbit. So uh, let me make A have two fixed points in this kind of hyperbolic dynamics. I mean, I'll, I'll, I would draw it like this, except now this gets in the way of other pictures on the circle. So I'm going to draw it like this. OK, meaning that, I don't know, the complement of this set gets mapped into the, this segment. I'm going to draw this here. OK. Uh, there's A. And I'll do B like this. So the complement of this segment is going to get sent by B inside of here. OK. And uh, 
if I pick a point x outside of the union of these uh, domains there, then uh, it has a free orbit. You can just trace this by hand, and you can do the classical ping pong lemma, uh, not hard to show. So the orbit of x here defines a circular order on G. Um, this is a nice example of an isolated circular order. Okay, uh, fake proof. Um, this is really rigid dynamics. If you perturb the action of A a little bit, I'll still have the complement of, I don't know, maybe a slightly bigger set getting sent into here. And the complement, if I perturb B a little bit, the complement of this set sent into there. The dynamics looks exactly the same as the original, as the original picture. You, the same argument now shows you that X has a free orbit, and in fact, we'll have the same cyclic order on the orbit. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, that was a real proof, but here. Now let me tell you an example to which you'll try and apply the same proof, and it will fail. Uh, here's something else I could do. A, so now I'm putting my uh, attracting and repelling domains like this, and here for B. Okay, and uh, here's a point X. Again, this is not a lie. This has a free orbit. Um, and the orbit of X uh, gives you a co-cycle C. And this is not an isolated circular order. OK. Um, so what part did I suppress before? Well, conveniently, I can erase the board while you digest and try and figure out what went wrong. You know, I think both of these things have this kind of rigid ping pong dynamics. If I per perturb either one of these actions of the group, I will get something that is, in fact, like conjugate back to the original action if I perturb it a small amount. So what was the problem? Um, this picture here uh, is an accurate description of the dynamical realization of this circular order. This one is not. Okay, so here's a different action of my free group on the circle that I could have done, and I would have got the same cyclic order of the point. Okay, uh, make A have a single fixed point. Okay, so now I'll take the complement of this interval into this interval. Okay, and I'll make B also have a single fixed point. and pick a point x over here. Uh, if you work through it, the cyclic order of the orbit of x under this group action and under that group action is the same. Okay. Um, so, these, these are not conjugate, right? Like a has one fixed point here and two fixed point there, right? They're semi-conjugate but not conjugate. Um, so only one of them is my unique up to conjugacy dynamical realization. In fact, it's this one. Okay. This is a dynamical realization of that circular order. And it's not rigid. You change A a little bit and it'll be infinite order, conjugate to an infinite order rotation. Right? Something completely different, not conjugate to the original thing. Here, if I just restrict, look at the orbit of X under A, and I, you know, here it's going like this. It's linearly ordered, in fact. If I change this a little bit and get rid of that fixed point, I'll have, you know, X 
some power and some bigger power oriented this way, which, which never happened here. Okay. So this is very easy to change a small amount and change what the order looks like. Okay, that, did that resolve? Did I make you more confused instead of less? No, happier? Okay. Um, so, mm, let me steal this top one. So the point is, here's a theorem that says if I start with the dynamical realization of a circular order and it's rigid, then you win, it's isolated. You have to start with that, though, and that's the point of the second picture. Um, So that, this example you can in fact completely do by hand and, and just sort of exhibit a finite set that determines the, 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 the action or the cyclic order. Um, but I don't know, I could start with something more complicated. I don't know, maybe A has dynamics like this. Uh, I'll give it, what, four fixed points. I'll, now I'll, I'll draw it on the circle. And maybe B has, I don't know, again, hyperbolic looking dynamics, but one, two, three, four, five, six, six points. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm bad at even parody. Uh, some, some, there we go. Um, if these have strong enough dynamics and not the same fixed points, then again, this will generate a free group. And if I pick some, some point here, it'll have a free orbit. And uh, is this an isolated circular order? I have no idea. Uh, I could check in this case if you wanted me to, and you give me 20 minutes. Um, but uh, I can sort of tell you that it is checkable. And that, in fact, this is the only kind of thing that can happen. Okay, so I'm optimistic we can say this for other groups, but at the moment, for free groups, this is what one can say. Um, suppose that C is an isolated circular order on, I'll go and say F, a free group on N generators to an N are just the same. Uh, really, this is just the first step in saying, you know, my first question hidden right there, what is the space of circular orders on the free group? Well, first step, find all its isolated points. Suppose I've got one, uh, then uh, it has exactly this kind of dynamics. Uh, Namely, uh, if I call my free group generated by A1, A2, AN, uh, then there exist uh, sets that are playing the roles of those attracting, repelling, looking uh, domains. Um, I don't know, XN plus attractor and XN minus, uh, such that the image of uh, any one of these under AI, oh, oops, sorry, I have N elements, let's use a different letter, is contained in the attractor for AI, and uh, that under its inverse, it's contained in what's looking like the repeller set for AI. Uh, I guess unless, uh, unless this set here is the repeller. 
uh, xi minus. OK, so it's a, it's a summary of exactly what is happening there in this, this kind of ping pong playing situation, um, except I don't necessarily need them to be connected. It could be a picture, picture like here where I have, I don't know, these as repellers for A, and this is the attracting set. Okay. Okay, whenever you have an isolated circular order, that's exactly what's happening. And so understanding this is now just a combinatorial problem about the order of some intervals on the, on the circle. Each one of these is a finite union of intervals. Okay, so this is really hopefully uh, reduces uh, at least finding the isolated points of this space to just a combinatorics kind of problem. And in each one, I can, I can check for you. If you give me a configuration like this, I can check and tell you if it came from a dynamical realization or not. Uh, it's a lot to do with this picture, where here you had a better idea. Um, but I don't know how to summarize it in a one-line statement yet. So that's still a work in progress. Um, and I think uh, I have two more minutes, so let me tell you what the, what the statement really is. Uh, and then, wait, I'm learning. Okay. So, moreover, let me explain why this is not, what is the phenomena behind I was allowed to make a different action here. Okay. Uh, if I'm given an action uh, of, I'll stick with free group, but you can generalize to other groups. We want to answer this question, was this the dynamical realization of a circular order, right? Can, did, can, can we win just by checking here? Um, uh, well, in the case where it has this kind of dynamics, If, so here's a condition that will tell you whether you're a dynamical realization. So if you take an invariant minimal set for the action uh, and you look at its complement. So there's my invariant minimal set and let's look at its complement. Okay. And I quotient by the action of G. Okay. I get something. Well, I get some number of intervals after I quotient by the action of G, because I had a set consisting of a bunch of disjoint intervals, complement of my exceptional minimal set. If this is connected, then rho is a dynamical realization, and therefore a dynamical realization of an isolated circular order. Okay. Um, so that's exactly what's happening over here. This one will have three connected components. This one will have one. If you're good at, if you're good at hyperbolic geometry, you can think of these as actually acting on the whole disk, right, as being elements of PSL2R. And if you quotient here, you'll get a, a one-hole torus. That's the quotient of the disk. The boundary is just one circle. Um, so if you look at the limit set and then take the quotient, you'll get just that, that interval. Um, sorry, if you take the complement of the limit set and take that quotient, you'll just get that one uh, connected circle. And here the quotient is a three-hole sphere. Uh, if, you have, if you look at the action on the whole disk, and so you get three different boundary components. Yeah. In that theorem, you don't need to say 
say anything about AI or XI minus? Um, uh, I mean, wait. So, this is covered by, I need to say here, unless I think this is XI plus. So, it's saying that with the exception of the you know, repeller set, everything else goes into the attractor and vice versa. Under the inverse, with the exception of the attractor, everything goes into the, yeah, yeah. So it's saying you have a ping pong situation. That's all. Um, and I think that's a good place uh, almost to stop. Uh, I talked a lot about free groups um, because, well, I don't know, ping pong is a nice place to start and free groups are good. You don't have to try and satisfy any relations. You can just play with element with circle homeomorphisms. Uh, it would be very interesting to try and do this with other groups. Uh, to try and use group relations to build some rigidity as well as just, just I don't know, dynamical principles. Uh, so I think there's lots of exciting things to be done, and I'll end it there. Thanks. <laughs>